I'd like to present some data which I hope will be interesting and uh, important to the audience. Uh, the Philippines, as we know it, is actually a well-known business uh, process outsourcing provider. And the reasons for this and our progress as a BPO provider uh, is bank is uh, hinged on several factors that have made us very, very successful. First of all, we look at the wealth of talent that we have here in the Philippines. As you can see in this particular slide, sorry, sorry about that. There. Um, in this particular slide, we actually have almost 400,000 graduates per year. Very high levels of written and, uh, and spoken English. And uh, on top of that, customer service as well is one of the industries that we have been very uh, strong on. And uh, in fact, it is by nature that Filipinos are driven by, uh, into providing excellent customer service for their customers. Uh, this is very predominant, I guess, in the retail industry, in the services industry, such as uh, hotel and restaurant management, for example. Uh, overseas, we have been very, very good providers of, uh, uh, what do you call this? Service uh, in, hospita in the hospitality industry. Now, um, and third, I guess, and most important of all, the reasons for success in the BPO industry is our familiarity with the Western culture. We do service a lot of US, Australian, and British accounts here in the Philippines. And with these three, I guess we're still in a very good position for growth and success, continued success. Now, uh, focusing on the voice BPO, in the Philippines, as you can see, we also have 18% of all secondary graduates fitting the profile of voice BPO worker which means that out of all our graduates, 80% are actually qualified to be in voice BPO. Compared to India, uh, this translates over one-fourth million qualified graduates each year versus India, which has uh, about 100,000 voice BPO graduates. Okay. Now, another, another thing that we have to look at is that what makes, uh, on a skill-based level, what makes the Philippines uh, very advantageous for BPO. Well, the first two, according to Gartner Research, which is a, an international research group, is that we have a very, well, very well, excellent uh, language and cultural compatibility uh, skill rating. And this also translates to the first slide that I mentioned earlier. And this ensures, according to this slide, an optimal customer experience for those on the other side of the fence. And how are we stacked uh, in terms of the global BPO market? Last year, news came out that we actually were the first, uh, we're, we're actually number one in terms of providing BPO services. But I'd like to clarify that we were first in voice BPO. If you talk about other skill sets and non voice BPO, India would still be on top of that list. And these are several of the factors why India is actually on top of the heap. So they have a better sourcing portfolio, they have a uh, transition to an innovation hub, holistic skills focus, a uh, public-private partnership modeling that's very effective for them, small-medium enterprise capacity, being able to service smaller uh, companies, keystone organizations for industry, meaning they have a very focused uh, organization that deals into the BPO industry, and of course their global networks. Now, if you look at it in a national, uh, from a national viewpoint, how much is the BPO industry actually contributing to our economy? As of 20, uh, 2010 figures, these are actually 2010 figures, uh, you will see that the BPO industry is actually contributing 9 billion pesos to our GDP. And the compounded annual growth rate, which is a measurement of uh, the investments that have been plugged in here, as you can see, is nine uh, percent as well. Now, looking at this five to six years from now, we are expecting industry growth to be anywhere from 15 billion to 25 billion contribution to the GDP. Now, the 15 billion is just the low end, and the percentage in terms of the GDP is six percent, as you can see in the low end of 2016, that bar over there. Now, there's been news of um, our OFW is coming back, 
and because of that, we anticipate more of these people to actually join the industry. So uh, in, in terms of growth, instead of 6%, we're actually looking at 40% down the road, six years from now. So that is just a very optimistic projection. And how does this affect, how does this affect our employment? With increase in, uh, in business and growth, of course, there's going to be an increase in, in the requirement in employing a lot of people here in the country. And we're looking at the 300% three, uh, growth, actually, over the next uh, six years. So for, from 440,000, uh, we're expecting to hire 1.4 million people within six years. And this is not even factoring in the OFWs who are arriving at our doorstep because their you know, other contracts have been canceled overseas or there are stricter patterns of employment overseas. Now, if you look at the supply and demand, which is very important because with the, with the anticipation of growth here in the Philippines, we would like to have a very good supply of, of talent who is going to fill in this demand. And with this graph, you actually see that by 2011, which is this year, we still have a very good pool that will support the demand for BPO, uh, BPO uh, jobs and openings. Unfortunately, we are projecting that by 2012, this supply will be uh, very scarce. And it's important that you know everyone in the industry and in, in government actually work hand in hand in trying to fill in this particular need. So we anticipate the government to be more involved in trying to raise the level of education here in the country and hopefully be able to meet this demand in the soonest time possible. Another way of looking at this particular demand is finding out how many people actually get hired every year. And one of the key issues here is that we do have a lot of graduates in this country. In fact, if you look at uh, this particular slide, we have 1.2 million high school graduates, but we cannot just employ 1.2 million graduates. Out of this 1.2 million graduates, we expect a fallout of about 600,000, and 600,000 actually enter college. But even the 600,000 we are anticipating to enter college will not be able to finish college. They will be, well, for better lack of it, for a lot of, for a lot of reasons they won't be able to finish, so we will be left with a net of 450,000 graduates, which hopefully uh, we would be able to employ. But not everyone has a career, uh, uh, has a mindset of uh, getting into a career in the BPO industry. So out of the 450,000, we are left with bottom line of 50 to 60,000 people we can actually directly employ. And the fallout happens for several reasons. Number one is that their backgrounds are not relevant to the openings in the BPO industry. And second, we lose them to higher education or migration, which means that they go overseas for better opportunities. Well, the bigger portion actually of it, and the third one is actually the lack of employable skills, meaning they don't have the necessary skills even after finishing college and to join, of joining the BPO industry. Now, on the right side of the slide, you will see that there is about 30 to 40,000 that we can actually still tap. And these are the career shifters, the people who are not thinking about the BPO industry as a career option, but in the process become employed or you know, are encouraged to join for one reason or another. So we're left with a total, I guess, net of 80 to 90,000 people who we can actually employ on an annual basis. And this is this projection is in particular for this particular year. So, begs the question, what are the pros and cons of, of, of the industry at this point? What are the advantages of being involved in, in an industry such as the BPO industry? Well, for one, yes, we are nearing the top spot in voice BPO. We are actually were number one last year, and we have to find out if we still are number one this year. Well, on the downside, there's very high attrition of 15 to 25 percent across the industry, meaning that in a, in a year's time, we expect 15 to 25 percent fallout of our own employees joining other industries, joining probably other call centers as well. But the attrition rate is pretty high. And a good note, of course, we're contributing to the economy and we see a very good growth rate in the next six years. 
but the graduate output is quite low and we're still challenged in trying to find out where we'll get the additional talent pool. Now, on top of that, one very good advantage for us is that we have a very good share of the global sourcing market. And this is highly in the voice BPO. However, we still have a long way to go in trying to uh, build the management teams of our companies. Not everyone who's actually employed in the industry has the managerial mindset. And in fact, a lot of, uh, a lot of expatriates do come to our country to teach Filipinos on how to manage this particular industry.